Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my northern style bog forest. It's been three years since I assembled this forest together. It's a mixture of larch and black spruce. Here is a look at the forest in its winter colors. All of these trees are hardy, they're native trees. So I've been keeping this forest in the poly house. It's unheated, but it's just protected from the wind. I brought it into the greenhouse here today to warm it up a bit, to thaw out the soil. So today I'm going to be cleaning it up, getting it ready for spring. Before I begin the work on the forest today, let's go back in time and review the history of the forest. So today I think instead of repotting, I'm going to do some pruning. And over here on this bench, I've got all these black spruce that Jonathan gave to me. I don't know how many there is, but there's a lot of them. So I was thinking of pruning those up. You can see this one, for instance, is very tall and straight with no taper. So I could prune that back, start getting some branch structure to them, getting that kind of conical shape. Spruce can be a very fast growing species. So I'm thinking of pruning it down fairly short. So I, I'm going to I'm going to prune it right back to these buds down here. So here I go. I'll leave a little room for dieback, so I'll prune kind of mid midway between the whorls. All right, here I go, like that, like that, and then my next layer down, my next whorl, they'll be a little longer. So I'll make those a little longer, trying to make it that conical shape. There's a look at the tree now, and you can see the basic conical form in the tree. So I'll let these bottom branches, you know, grow. I won't pinch the new shoots on them. And when the new ones grow up top here, I'll be pinching those, controlling the vigor, keeping this, you know, tightly pruned, and letting the bottom branches get stronger. You like the sun, do you? <laughs> you don't know what to think. You're in a forest, a spruce forest. I'm really excited about getting this spruce forest all put together. I think it's going to look really nice. I'm going to be thinking about all kinds of different ideas for the forest tonight. I'll be studying pictures of spruce forests and getting ideas for the landscape and the general layout of the forest. And I'll show you some pictures of that. So that's the style that I'm trying for, is that very tight triangular style with the almost a separate Christmas tree on the top of the tree. So uh, some people say they look like arrows. Uh, it's nice in fall, you have a backdrop of these black spruce, like dark needle trees, and then you get the bright yellow larches in front of them and oh, it just looks beautiful. I'll show you some photos of that.
with all the noise in the neighborhood and the really cold weather, I'm going to leave the planting of the spruce forest for another day when it's uh, a little nicer out and quieter in the neighborhood. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be planting a bog style forest using black spruce and larch trees. I've got all the elements for the forest in front of me here, my spruce trees and my larch trees. This will be the first time I've tried a mixed species planting or forest. All right, so I'm going to put, I want a living tree out front here. So maybe it's got a lot of side branches down low. I could kind of put it in about there, maybe. This tree, I think it'll look good here because it has a deadwood section on it. That kind of will be a transition between the two dead trees and the living trees. I think I'll place another larch kind of back in here and maybe even a third here. So I'm going to place the next larch kind of have my gap between here over towards this side. And I've got three more large small ones that I could maybe make a little clump of three over on this side of the planting. Here's a look at the forest now with the clump of three trees over on this side. I think so far it's still looking good. I have one more larch that really got pruned down hard. So I'll put that on the very left hand edge of the planting and see how that looks. The only place I could place that larch is kind of at the edge between the pot and the rock. And if you look in this view, it kind of, like I said, it's jammed up against the edge of the pot here, right here, and it doesn't look good. So I've got to move it in, in more. I may leave that as negative space on the outside of the pot there. Just doesn't look good jammed up against the edge. I think I'll place that little one over on the right hand side here. It looks quite nice in that clump over there. Kind of makes that triangular transition to the edge of the pot. Here's a look at the bog forest so far. So now comes the hard part, which is adding the spruce, the black spruce trees, which are quite large. So I'll do a little root pruning just to get the root base more compact. If you left the roots long like this, there's no way you'd get all these trees close together. They'd be all kind of spaced equally and it would look very artificial. So in the forest, you want variation in the distance between your trees. So I'll take some off the bottom here. That looks pretty good. I think that's got a good shallow root system. There's enough fibrous roots on here to keep the tree looking good and growing well. Oh, I really tangled up this long one. It's got to come off. There. Okay, I'll try this out in the forest now. I think that'll be the front for the tree. I've got all my trees positioned in the forest now. So I'm going to start filling in the soil, leveling it out, trying to get my low bog part in this area and my higher land section over here, and then I'll add moss. I filled the car to my camera. So in the meantime, I continue to add the moss to the forest. So we'll go in and have a look at it. Hopefully all will go well with the forest this spring. Everything will live and grow. The trees in this planting are quite small and they require a lot of pruning to keep them in check. Otherwise they become big fuzzy blobs and you don't see the individual trees. They kind of all merge together. So today I'm going to do a profile prune to these trees. I have got the blue scissors out. I've sharpened them. They should cut really well. So here's the apex of this first tree. So what I want to do is cut from the apex down into a conical form. So just shearing the tree. And it, it seems kind of brutal this, uh, but it sure gets the tree to shape. You know, I'm just cutting through everything that is outside of that conical form. 
right through here like that. So you can see the conical form. It's not perfect yet, but uh, it's uh, on its way. It's uh, looking like a slim conical tree from up north. This first spring flush of growth is the strongest, so every time it flushes out after this, the growth will be much more compact, weaker, and more in scale with the trees. So you kind of have to manage that first flush. Your trees will look like a big bush, and then you've got to prune it back do some needle thinning and get them under control and then every flush after that will be a little easier to manage. I've got all the spruce pruned up at least for today. They're, they're looking good. I made some improvements on most of the trees. Removing some branches, with placing them with better ones, pinching them back, sorting out the branch structure a little bit. Definitely an improvement. I would say about yeah, maybe a 10% improvement. And you have to be patient with spruce. Uh, you can wire them. Uh, I wouldn't recommend wiring them for two reasons. One, when they're this small, you wire them up and the wire is going to get lost in the tree. You'll forget about the wire. And then you'll end up with this branch that's just horribly scarred with wire marks. Or uh, you'll wire it all in place and then you'll remove the wire and then all the branches start coming up again which is what happens on spruce. You wire them down and then they grow back up again. So the clip and grow method is more permanent. When I clip a branch to a certain direction, it tends to stay there. It, over many, many years, it might slightly come up, but it's a little more permanent than you know drastic wiring, hoping it stays in place. I'll be losing the sunshine on my bog forest soon. It's going behind the white pine. So let's fly in now and have a look at the forest. I have the one path coming in here and it disappears out the back. The other one comes in here and snakes along and disappears out the back so they join together. And I was thinking this one, maybe I could wrap it around and bring it out this way, kind of between these trees. So I'm going to pull out some of the moss from the front here. I'm going to get the stand out now and we'll take a final look at my northern mixed bog forest. We are back to present day time now, January 2024. This forest will be going into its fourth growing season as a forest, and a forest like this takes a lot of maintenance work to keep it miniature looking, keep the trees in check and the landscape. So today I'm going to be working on the forest, getting it ready for the spring growing season. My idea for this forest was to have the larch trees in the foreground and the darker green colored spruce in the background so that in fall, when the larch get their yellow needles on them, it contrasts against the dark colored spruce in the background. And it's quite effective. It looks really beautiful in fall. I like having a mixture of trees in my bonsai collection. I have ficus that remind me of the tropical rainforests. And this planting is very North American or Canadian. It reminds me of the scenery I see around me. And it, it makes me feel like I'm home. It's a uh, a very typical forest of what you would see in this area. I'm going to begin today with the very exciting task of weeding. <laughs> I have liverwort in here, I have some weeds, so that's where I'll begin pulling out all the weeds. Here's a look at the forest floor and you can see the liverwort that's grown in here that I've got to pull out. I've got weeds growing up. And weeding is an ongoing process with your bonsai. It's just something you have to do. Having moss on the surface of your soil helps. It uh, 
tends to keep the weeds down. This moss is really, really thick here. Oh, there's one of those grubs in the moss. I better get rid of that. I'm sure I'll find more of those crane fly larvae in here. There's another one. That's two so far. My one tree, my uh, American elm, it had a nice covering of moss on it. And then within about three or four days, all the moss disappeared. And I think it's crane fly larvae in the soil eating the moss. So I'm going to have to do a total repot in spring of that tree and make sure that the roots of the tree aren't getting eaten by the crane fly larva. I'm really looking forward to repotting season this year. I've got a lot of trees that are in need of repotting and a lot of trees that I want to repot to get them into you know, better pots, trees that are developing more from a seedling, getting closer to becoming a bonsai. Around the back of my planting here, I've had a squirrel or something digging in my soil. It pulled up all this moss, so that'll all have to be fixed up. I really love creating forests, but there is a lot of work in them. There is 11 black spruce in this forest, and there's nine larch. So each tree takes a lot of time to trim and maintain. And then you've got the landscape also, which takes a lot of work too. I'll continue weeding the forest and then we'll come back and look at it. I think there'll be a lot of bare spots where I've had to pull out moss and liverwort together. So I may have to replant a lot of moss in spring to kind of clean up the landscape. It is possible I could strip all the moss off the forest and then just replant it all with fresh moss that's a little more compact. But generally I like to try and work with what I have. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties of moss in here and it kind of adds to that natural feeling uh, maintaining your moss and seeing what surprises nature brings you so I'll, I'll pull out the weeds and the liverwort and then we'll see what's left I am working away weeding this forest and there's a lot of areas where the liverwort is just kind of merged in with the moss and I have to like pull big chunks of moss off and I'm finding grubs in here well there's one right there I'll show you the grubs I've gotten so far you can see the pile of them and most of this moss this is like sphagnum moss here and it's grown very thick so what I'm thinking is I better strip the entire forest of moss and just replant moss in spring. I, I think with the, the crane fly larva in the soil, I better get that one out before I forget about it. Come here, you. Put that in the pile. Yeah, I think with the crane fly larva and the moss being so thick and all the weeds mixed in with the moss, I better just strip the entire forest of moss and start over in spring with my landscaping. I think that would be the best thing. So I'm stripping the entire moss off the surface. There's just so many weeds mixed in with the moss too that I think it's best just to start over and I'll get rid of all those grubs on the surface. I have got the moss stripped off the surface of the forest and I'm actually glad I did totally strip it off because when I pull the moss off it leaves the deeply rooted weeds behind and then you can see them and pull them out. I also found more crane fly larvae. So the first batch I showed you got fed to the chickens and here is my second batch of crane fly larvae. There they are wiggling around, so those will go to the chickens too. So it'll also allow me to pick off all the moss around the base of the trees, get them cleaned up, and I can reevaluate the landscape, uh, my hills and valleys and 
yeah, allow me to do a bit of landscaping. I'll get all my moss here cleaned up and throw that on the compost pile. Here is a look at the forest now, so it's changed a little bit without that moss. My next step, I'm going to clean up the moss at the base of the trees. Some of it's climbing up the trunks. I'll come in with my tweezers and just pull all that moss that's climbing up the trees off. So I'll work away cleaning up all the moss around the base of the trees and then we'll come back for the next step. I have got the moss removed from the base of all the trees and I'm really glad that I did strip away the moss. You can see how high it was climbing up on the trunks. You can see the dark areas on the trunks that were covered with moss. So I think it was a good move removing that moss and starting it all over again. It was getting way too thick. So next I'm looking at the dead tree in the middle here. And you can see that the bark at the base of the tree is rotted away and it's separating. See that? And I don't know how long this tree will last in here. Like eventually it'll rot away. Just like any tree does in a forest, a dead tree. Um, I do have a replacement tree over here. There's another black spruce right here. So I could put this in the forest and I may even plant it today because you know the surface of the soil isn't frozen anymore. I could plant it doing minimal root pruning and I think it would survive fine. So I may do that at the end of today. Plant that last black spruce in the forest. I do have like there's an area here sort of a clearing which I like. It's a little thin at the back if you look through the trees it's a little thin so a black spruce would look nice maybe somewhere in back here. It would fill in that area so you can't see through the forest quite as much so that's kind of all trees so your eye doesn't go through the forest it kind of stays in the forest. So I, I think it would help planting one more spruce in the forest here. This dead tree, um, there's a few limbs on it that have kind of decayed and broken. So I, I might trim that back a bit uh, just to give a little more clearance and light to the surrounding trees, making it more of a trunk with small branches instead of these weeping kind of branches. You can see how the trees are growing out in towards this tree now. So I better do a little pruning there. My other option would be to pull the dead tree out of the forest and plant the spruce in that spot. That could look quite good too. Like I said, this tree won't last forever. It'll rot away at the base. And um, I'm going to try that. I'll try it. I can always stick this tree back in the soil if it's not looking good. But So this tree did have a root base on it. So I'm going to try and wiggle it out. Like that. That would eventually all rot away. So yeah, I'll, I'll take that out and I'll try planting the tree in its the living tree in the place of the dead tree. I noticed on this spruce here, I, I left one of the lower branches to grow up like another tree. And it has a root coming out of it from up here down into the soil. That's pretty strange. I'm going to prune that away. It's a interesting feature. If it was a ficus, I'd leave it, but not for a spruce. I'm just stepping back having a look at the forest without that dead tree there. I don't think it takes away from the forest too much. I think if I plant 
this other tree in its place, I think it'll look fine. So that's what I'll do. All right, I'm going to get this tree out of the pot, which does have a drainage hole on the bottom. You can see the roots have grown quite nicely. There's a lot of liverwort and weeds at the top that I've got to get rid of. So I'm not going to do much root pruning. I'll just sort of sort them out a bit and plant the tree and it should do quite well. I do have to see where the root base starts in this tree. So I'm just scraping away the surface soil trying to find where the roots come out. Now it looks like this is another tree that's died here. So I'll just take that out. There's a few lower branches that don't look so good on this tree. But basically it looks good and healthy. Just get rid of some of this excess soil on the bottom too. Okay, I think the rest is mostly roots. So I think that's ready for planting. I've already got a hole in here where I dug the tree out, the dead tree. I'll just make sure it's deep enough for this one. There is a, a walnut planted in my forest. A squirrel must have done that. I don't know how that got in there, but wow. The things you find. I can't believe that really deep in the soil. Surprised it didn't germinate and grow. Okay, so is there a front to this tree? I think here. Branches are kind of coming forward. So I'll put this tree in here. I better do just a light root pruning on the bottom here. Get rid of these really long ones. is an out-of-season repot and that can go in the forest now. All right here I go planting the tree. I think that's a good height there. I'll just make sure the soil is in around the roots. So I just have to make sure the tree is vertical and I think that's pretty good there. Okay, well, we'll see how that does. It should do fine. And it looks good in there. Kind of fills that space in. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. I can see growing it up so it's a little taller. So it kind of fits within the triangular profile of the forest. So that could grow up a bit. Here is an overall look at the forest now with that new tree planted. I think it definitely lost a bit uh, getting rid of that dead tree. I think the dead tree was another size variation in trunks. However, I will grow this tree out. I will uh, thicken it up, get it taller, and I think it'll look really good someday. It'll just take a bit of time and a bit of work to get it looking good. I think, you know, that dead tree will just, as I said, it'll rot away eventually. And yeah, so I think a living tree as a replacement is a positive step forward for the forest for the future. My last step for today is I'm going to look at the trees and prune up anything that's just obviously not growing in the right place, like branches that are sticking straight up, anything that's obvious. I don't want to prune the larches uh, until spring when the buds are swelling so you know what's alive and what is possibly dead. And the spruce, uh, you know, they'll generate a lot of buds in spring. And once you see all the living buds, then you can do your detailed pruning. But for now, I'll just prune away anything that's really obvious and I'll try and show you some examples. Here's an example on this spruce at the back here. So on this branch, there's a new shoot that's growing back in towards the trunk of the tree. It's not fanning out from the tree, so that could be pruned away as part of the cleanup. 
I'm looking for other examples now. Here's one back here. There's another branch on this spruce that's growing in towards the trunk. That could be removed. So that's what I'll be looking for. Anything that's kind of, you know, a branch obviously not growing in the right direction, I can prune away. On that tree here, there's a few shoots that are kind of sticking up. There's one there that could be pruned away. Right in here, that could be pruned away. So just a little bit of detail work on the trees. All right, let's get these branches pruned up. So there's this one back here that I can take off. And this one in here I can remove. There's one shooting straight up here I can take off. So it's just a matter of looking at each tree, looking for things that are just obviously not right. There's a shoot here sticking straight up I can take off. There's a nice strong shoot out the back. Some of these trees, you know, they still need a lot of refinement. There's branches kind of growing upwards. Eventually I'll get a bud that's more horizontal and I can prune the upwards part off. So here's another one growing in towards the center of the tree. There's one sticking straight up here I can take off. Yeah, and slowly over the years these trees will get better and better to the point where they look more and more miniature and more kind of realistic looking. They have come a long way in the last three years though. I'm happy with the progress of them. This tree on the end here is quite very upright so I'm hoping I can get that looking like the other trees eventually, that conical form. There's some good buds down here which are starting to form. But yeah, it's not much of a tree this one at the moment. But, you know, there's room for improvement. Yes, patience is required with bonsai. You can't expect to get perfect trees, you know, overnight. It takes years and years of refinement before you get something that's looking really nice. Here's another one pointing in. I can come out. There's one straight up here I'll take out. There's a funny one in here I can remove. It's going straight up. That old branch is a little strange. I better take off the upper part here. Taking that off. Keeping my branches that are fanning out. This one larch here is has always been weak. And because I think the bark is removed on the trunk, I don't think it's going to survive. Um, I think it got ringed by a rabbit or something or a mouse and there's just no living tissue on the lower part of the trunk. It's been growing. There may be a live vein somewhere on it that's keeping it alive or it could perish eventually. So I'll have to, you know, always keep my eye open for suitable small larch that I can replace that tree with if it does die in the future. That's true of any tree in a forest setting. Um, you may get some that don't make it and it's always good to have replacement trees on hand. Okay, I think I've got most of the major faults out of the trees. I 
don't see too much that's bothering me. Oh, well, maybe here. One point inwards. I'll be going over all these trees again, so if I missed anything today, I'll catch it the next time. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's fly in now and have a final look at my northern bog forest in the midwinter. I did on my forest today will save me time in spring so I can concentrate on repotting trees. So it's nice to do some midwinter work, cleaning your trees up, getting them ready for spring. No dramatic changes today, just replacing that dead tree with a living tree, a bit of cleanup work and pruning. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.